the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I have always been passionate about seeing that the reality of the gospel and the power of God that it is able to transform our territories so that our territories can call upon the name of the Lord not just individuals and history history has taught us that it is possible for both individuals and territories to come under the Lordship of Christ did you know that most of the technological advancements we celebrate today in Europe and in the developed nations most of the, that that technological renaissance happened um, at a similar at, at a close period with the advancement of the gospel as they received the gospel it gave way for several other things including our regions too so I know that God has helped us the average believer who has been a serious church goer even if not even if not a serious believer at least if you are frequent in church you should not be you should not be at a loss as to the fact that preachers continue to communicate the need for personal salvation you've seen altar calls after every service not just here in koinonia generally in most churches but the challenge remains that we must be trained to understand how to save nations jesus taught the disciples how to be saved and how to save nations we have only taught how to save people we have not taught how to save territories and so this two-part series is an attempt a very generous and honest attempt to show us the ways of God and to guide us into understanding how to transform and bring territories under the Lordship of Christ. Notice that in, in communicating, um, Jesus was speaking in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. He says, you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and he said you shall be witnesses unto me he connects their witness to territories he didn't say you just walk around or meet anyone he said no 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 i'm interested in the territory i'm interested in jerusalem i'm interested in judea i'm interested in samaria i'm interested in the uttermost part of the earth if you're learning already say amen hallelujah so i'm teaching on a two-part series that i titled commanding salvation over territories commanding salvation over territories commanding salvation over territories we're going to be learning the scriptural principles that can bring territories to experience the power and the grace of God to come under the Lordship of Christ experientially hallelujah and part one let me give you the course content part one tonight we're going to be discussing the witness of mighty works part one the witness of mighty works mark chapter 6 and verse 2 the witness of mighty works commanding salvation over territories and tonight we're going to be looking at the witness of mighty works and when the sabbath day was come he began to teach in the a record of the consequence of what followed the apostles after the healing of the man at gate beautiful 
so follow the story carefully and as they spake unto the people the priest and the captain of the temple and the sadducees came unto them long reading let's hurry up media being grieved that they taught the people and preached through jesus the resurrection from the dead so understand the basis now that someone was angry because of something what was he angry about that they were teaching the people jesus right verse 3 and they laid hands on them and put them in hold to the next day for it was now even tied how be it many of them which heard the word believed take note now so many people believed and the number of the men was about five thousand my goodness look at this kind of harvest five thousand verse five and it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers their elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John Alexander and as many as were of a kindred of the high priest were gathered together where at Jerusalem so we know that something was beginning to happen not just to individuals but something was happening to the territory are you following me now and when they had set them in the midst they asked by what power this was their concern by what power or by what name have you done this they questioned the basis for this level of results even over the territory verse 8 then peter filled with the holy ghost said unto them ye rulers of the people and elders of israel uh-huh if we this day be examined of the good deed done by done to the important man by what means he's made whole be it known unto you all and to the people of israel that by the name of jesus of nazareth whom ye crucified whom god raised from the dead even by him doth this man stand here before you whole 11 this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders which is become the head of the corner neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved now when they saw the boldness of peter pay attention and john and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled why and they took knowledge of them that they had been with jesus 14 and beholding the man which was healed standing with them they could say nothing against them the witness of mighty works but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council they conferred among themselves hmm. saying what shall we do to this man for that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in read the remaining sentence and we cannot deny it one more time it says what shall be done unto this man for indeed a notable miracle had been done by them and they did not just stop there it is manifest to the entire territory of jerusalem and we cannot deny it next verse but that it spread no further among the people let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name what was their fear we can't do anything about the personal salvation of this man but let's find a way of stopping it from reaching the territory are you getting this discussion now there's nothing we can do about the man we can't say lie at this this is too notable however what we can do is to try to stop it from spreading that they no more speak in that name 18 we're almost there and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of jesus notice please go back to 18. he never said they stopped them from preaching he never said they stopped them from doing ministry keep doing whatever you are doing but can you take 
this name out of that message they were not banned from doing ministry they were banned from doing ministry the way that works 19 but peter and john answered and said unto them whether it be right in the sight of god to hearken unto you more than unto god judge ye for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen or heard the last verse 21 so when they had further threatened them they let them go finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people for all men how many men all men, men glorify god not just for that which was said for that which was done the witness of mighty works please look at me the bible is very clear as to the fact that god desires to see believers excel in their personal spiritual lives as as an expression of the excellency of the power and the workings of the spirit within us but much more than that god desires for us to excel because the results that are produced in and from our lives have a territorial implication as far as kingdom advance is concerned are we together now that the result that comes from my life and your life has an implication the territory it has an implication over the territories that we are domiciled in and this is a very important information in matthew chapter matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 jesus now when you read from verse 1 and 2 and then jump to 13 the bible says that he looked at the people start from 1 and 2 and then we'll jump to 13 seeing the multitudes the bible says he went up into a mountain and when he was set his disciples came unto him the bible says he opened his mouth verse 2 and taught them saying he said many things but let's go to 13 this is part of what he said ye are the salt of the earth he said but if the salt have lost his sever wherewith shall it be salted it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men ye are the light everybody say light ye are the light of the world he says you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden 15 neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light to how many look at the territorial implication the candle does not give light to only one person the candle was lit so that it will light everybody who is in the house are you learning something now jesus is teaching us that our salvation is not just personal there is a territorial component to our salvation and that this light should not just give illumination to one person but it must give light to all who are in the house verse 16 it says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven this is very 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 powerful that means when god wants to bring salvation to territories the first thing he does is to bring salvation to individuals listen carefully and when he brings salvation to those individuals he now uses those individuals to become a symbol of salvation to the territories and that one of the ways that he compels territories to be saved is through the witness of mighty works that comes from those who have experienced that salvation that the mighty works of the saints can cause a territory can compel a territory to come under the lordship of christ someone say results please shout it again say results 
this is a world where you are not the only one preaching the bible tells us that results have a voice that there is a sermon that results can give and that the territory is the audience of that sermon when the holy spirit speaks to you as an individual when a preacher speaks to you as an individual that edifies you personally you give your life to jesus christ but that when it has to do with your territory sometimes it is not your voice that should be the preacher because the territory may not hear your voice there is a kind of language of evangelism the territory has been trained to hear and the bible calls it mighty works that mighty works are also evangelists within a territory there is something there is a sermon that results can speak over a territory mighty works are also preachers results are also messengers their assignment is to convert the territory the same way the individual has been converted so the same way we frown at the low or the poor committal and passion to personal evangelism we must also frown when territories are not saved listen to me i don't know about you but let me talk about myself if in one week nobody gets saved through my life i will go for a retreat one week seven days no one comes to jesus no one hears about him i will go for a retreat i'm sure that it may be it may be so for many of us here are we together but how come our territories seem to be bankrupt of evangelism there is a kind of evangelism that abuja is waiting for there is a kind of evangelism nigeria is waiting for there is a kind of evangelism and listen we have been saying many things to the territory and the territory is saying i don't understand what you are saying speak my language god is teaching us the sermon that converts territories it is called mighty works are we together that in acts chapter 4 just one miracle of an impotent man it was so notable the man was standing everybody had seen him everybody knew him nobody was told to evangelize and spread that news it was too notable to be quieted and they went round and before you you think the 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 council just gathered because they didn't have what to do it is impossible for those in power to ignore what everybody is talking about are we together now yes the power of personal results that it is from the results that we produce the mighty works that are wrought in and through our hands by god that we compel territories to acknowledge that there is a god in heaven and then to submit to the lordship and the authority of that god now why do families why do individuals i wrote here why do nations experience perpetual defeat perpetual failure perpetual hardship it's a question why do we have individuals believers inclusive why do we have families why do we have territories under perpetual defeat perpetual failure and perpetual hardship let me give us two scriptures and then i'll begin to give you some of the reasons and we pray is god helping us already so far proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 proverbs 13 and 15 it says good understanding giveth favor but the way of the transgressor is hard you know who a transgressor is a transgressor is a violator of an ordinance a defaulter consistent defaulter 
in genesis chapter 19 let's start from verse 1 but the verse of emphasis is verse 11 genesis 19 1 media help us please look at what you're doing genesis 19 1 and there came two angels watch this now there came two angels this was the event at sodom and gomorrah there came two angels to sodom at evening remember those irresponsible people there and lord sat at the gate of sodom and lord seeing them arose to meet them and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground quick reading and he said behold now my lord turn in i pray you into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet and all of that next verse verse 3 and he pressed upon them greatly and they turned him unto him and entered into his house and he made them a feast and did bake on living bread and they did eat verse 4 but before they lay down the men of the so you, you see now every time the bible talks about a city pay attention there was a man in that city who knew the god of heaven but the city itself was a place of decadence and evil are we together now his this scripture shows us the consequence of having personal salvation and yet your territory does not acknowledge your god you are still not safe this was a man who was in fellowship with god he had discernment to see angels but because his territory was not saved you are about to see the consequence of a territory that has not come under the lordship of christ are you ready before he lay down the men of the city even the men of sodom compass round the house both old and young what foolish generation the old and when old and young people are doing the same foolishness it means that territory is in trouble do you agree with me if he just said the young men will understand but both old and young all the people came from where every quarter to the house of the one man who had a relationship with the god of heaven verse 5 and they called unto lot and said where are the men which came in unto thee this night listen to their request not a prayer request listen to their request bring them unto us that we may know them are you seeing what happens to a territory this man this man has encountered the god of heaven but the territory was not saved and even though they knew they were angels when lord saw the angels what did he do he greeted them and invited them when these people saw the angels what did they say and they called lot and said okay verse 6 very quickly and lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after them can you see that if your territory is not saved even though you are saved you will not find peace you see it there verse 8 okay verse 7 7 and said i pray you brethren do not so wickedly we're reading to 11 verse 8 behold now look out there i have two daughters which have not known man let me i pray you bring them unto you and do ye unto them as is good in your eyes only unto these men do nothing for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof listen to what the men said verse 9 and they said stand back and they said again this one fellow came into sojourn and he will needs be a judge now will we deal worse with thee than with them and they pressed sore upon the man even lot and came near to do what for as long as you are within a territory that does not call upon the name of the lord no matter how saved you are no matter how all right you are you are really not all right you don't have to look for trouble those who are not saved will come and look for your trouble hallelujah verse 10 but the men put forth their hand and pulled lot into the house the angels now and shut the door verse 11 watch what happened 
and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with what blindness both great both small and great so that they wearied themselves at the door i'm explaining something to you here the reason why the angels the men could make advancement to open that door was because their eyes were open when the angels wanted to make their life hard what did the angels do that means when the devil wants to make anybody's life hard he does not need to do anything to your hands he does not need to do anything necessarily to your 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 physical environment blindness is associated with hardship the bible says even though they were standing at the door because they had blindness they wearied themselves to find the door the door to victory the door to peace the door to advancement they wearied themselves because of blindness why do people and families and nations experience lives of defeat failure and hardship i want to give you a few reasons four of them are you ready number one please pay attention this is now a feast of light the first reason why individuals especially are not able to command the kind of results that will evangelize to a territory is over dependence on the strength of the flesh number one please write it down the first biblical reason why individuals and even families don't seem to be able to command the kind of result that will bring territories to a standstill for the name and the glory of jesus is because we live in times where there is an over dependence on the strength of the flesh over dependence on the strength of the flesh over dependence on our abilities over dependence on our connections over dependence on our education over dependence on technology you go to regions where jesus seems to be a nuisance because they feel once you are educated once you are technologically advanced once you have connections to this and that you do not need him again proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 trust in the lord with all your heart write it down please and do not lean not on your own understanding verse 6 says in all your ways acknowledge him we have acknowledged our brains we have acknowledged it we have acknowledged relationships but we are yet to acknowledge god there are nations that pride themselves and say we are the leaders in technological advancement there are nations that pride themselves and say we are the leaders in manufacturing in intellect in this and that but god is looking for nations that can say we are the nation that as a corporate people we have acknowledged the lordship of jesus christ unashamedly over dependence on the strength of the flesh first samuel chapter 2 and verse 9 first samuel chapter 2 and verse 9 it says he will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail listen we live in a world today where people pride themselves with a sense of invincibility it looks like the more you seem to not need any assistance especially from a standpoint of faith they look at you as one who is intelligent you are sound you know what you are doing can i be honest with you any nation that rejects the assistance of the god of heaven is a nation that will eventually plunge to decadence are we together over dependence on our intellect our connections our education our businesses our wisdom 
and so on and so forth now these things are not wrong don't get me wrong god gave them to us but god gave them to us in a way and a manner that we must be able to exalt him above these things that is the only way it profits us there are people today whose strength is in business there are people today whose strength is in human connections and every time you are talking about god the holy spirit the place of wisdom divine direction they look at you as some weak failure who is just broke and does and wants to console himself using christianity can i tell you this respectfully church of the lord jesus christ god is calling us back to genuine spirituality we are beginning to lean on the philosophies of men now i'm not saying these things are wrong but church make sure we do not replace the shoulder of priests with a cat in carrying the presence of god there are things only god can do there are things only the presence of god can do a a laptop and an ipad an ipad and a phone and whatever they can help to digitalize my study but they cannot impart the holy ghost to me so do not idolize them thank god for the convenience but if you want god you need more than a laptop you need a functional relationship with the god of heaven are we together the pride of man I pray that in our lifetime that God will grant us grace that these things this acknowledgement of the glory of God happens in our lifetime so that the pride of man will not reach the heavens and make us see these things we've been reading in the Bible read your Bible and see what happened to men when their pride got to the heavens usually there will be a visitation upon that land that brings the people back is it Nebuchadnezzar is it herod in the bible read men and women who believe that they were invincible over dependence over dependence preachers let's be careful listen uh, please don't don't find offense in what i'm saying you are a man of god thank god for leds thank god for mics thank god for everything thank god for excellence aces none of them can bring the presence of god to your congregation you need functional fire that comes from the secret place those things only help to provide convenience no matter how expensive your clothes are no matter how intelligent your speaking is believe me icing is only useful when there is a cake when there is nothing you don't eat icing like that are we learning now i'm saying this because there are many younger ministers who are already learning some of these philosophies no place of fire god calls you the first thing you are looking for is a laptop and a bible with several versions congratulations let me tell you how god makes men there is something called the cave of adulam there is there is a place of training that no amount of convenience and technology can replace are we together yes. over dependence i have this i have that ministry must work for me i just came in from so 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 places i have this and that in fact there is one technology is the latest one gentlemen let me tell you this by the privilege of god's grace this man stand i don't claim to know everything but i can tell you i've worked with god a bit i truly know what commands power many of the things we think bring power is not what brings power technology does not fast technology does not pray technology can help you hear a message but ladies and gentlemen whether you hear bible on tape you hear bible on whatever until you pray until you build your spirit man and have a track record with god don't misunderstand me remember point one over dependence are we together the moment something goes wrong the first thing most believers think about is um which of my certificates can solve this problem 
which connection I know is a simple thing I, I can manage it small pain there I know I'm just waiting my, my brother is a doctor somewhere can I tell you the truth the days that we are in now are days of high level spirituality where this is why you can see you can see what happens our medical people here will tell you you can find someone not taking in what is the reason everything that should make for pregnancy is there and yet it does not happen demons are telling you that if it's advancement we've tasted this long ago over dependence on the strength of the flesh submit your prayer request for prayer no my uncle just became chairman of one board somewhere and god is watching you and saying except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over the city the watchmen watch it but in vain thank god for posters thank god for billboards thank god for all of these things but none of them has the power in themselves to draw intelligent people to god's presence it takes that anakazo the compelling power of the spirit to cause men to leave their homes to come and sit in your ministry who do you think you are human beings are not stupid john wesley says set yourself on fire and the whole world will come and watch you burn can i tell you i know there is e everything but there is no e fire mm -mm. if it is fire it must be right there you must set it and the impact must be felt there over dependence can i tell you we are people who value knowledge we are people who value all of the provisions that our times have made for us but when i go before god i don't go and say lord we have this we have mm -mm, mm -mm. there is something about the power of god and the, and the, and dependence dependence a mic can amplify your voice but it cannot impart the anointing philosophies volumes and volumes of intellectual dissertations that do not have the power to transform you will finish talking intelligently and raise an altar call and half of the congregation is full of sinners and not one person will come out someone just trolls out out of pity ah. i made up my mind that i would never stand on any pulpit and just just talk stories and sometimes you know a sermon is going and people can even be distracted somebody is gisting and saying instead of listening to this guy wasting our time let's at least be discussing the let's use the opportunity and quickly discuss the business on monday go and read your bible and see what happened in the past when preachers were preaching there were people who were passing they were not part of the people there the power of god will hook them up like a and keep them there preachers let's return back to the place of dependence thank god for all of these things no man can build any ministry not by any formula thank god for principles here and there i do not negate them principles of excellence principles of this but let me tell you presence supersedes principles principles only work when presence is in place over dependence on the strength of the flesh giving credit to men giving credit to the flesh no that is the reason why when god wants to make such statement he lifts ordinary people like us and puts us there as a statement to say this treasure that is so earthen but there is the excellency of power you know so that the excellency of power might be of god and not of us
dearly beloved. I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bashka na kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto breka teke ne kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.